you still can. Leave now before Master finds you. Who is that knocking at my door? Who is that knocking at my door? Who is that knocking at my door? Be gone with you. <laughs> In today's video, we are diving into the third George Romero Dead Zombie series, Day of the Dead from 1985. What I love about this movie is that it's about being underground, and you think with the military being around, you feel safe. But sadly, this movie shows how you're not even safe with the military. The military are just as bad as corrupt, worse than the zombies. The military have PTSD, even though they've been through so much shit, lost a lot of friends and family. But at the same time, it's still no excuse for how very mean they are to Sarah and her friends. It's a very claustrophobic movie. It's depressing, gloomy, everything is cold. In the last movie, it had a little dark humor comedy moments, product placements. But in this movie, it's very serious and dark and has no sense of humor at all. It is a cold open of a man shouting. It seems that all of humanity is possibly gone. Or Lord knows if there's still any humans out there. The shots of the dead cold towns are good. No explanation for the visual shots is all we need to know. It has a nice shot of the camera pointing at a newspaper headline saying, The Dead Walk. Out of all the Romero dead characters, Sarah's probably by far my favorite character in the series. She's a Sarah Connor, Ellen Ripley of the Dead series. I wish they bought this character back. At the same time, each movie is a reboot. She was probably the first female in a George Romero dead zombie movie where she was not the typical damsel in distress. Not like Barbara or Francine. She's the kind of character you root for for not taking shit from Rhodes and the rest of the army. You also root for her to stand up against Rhodes, that she will not tolerate his bullshit and will not bow down or be dominated bully by some guy who was a high-ranking officer. That doesn't mean shit. Sarah is tough, brave, strong, smart, a risk taker, and independent. That's what makes her a likable character. Because it goes back to the first movie where these characters can't put their bullshit aside and learn to work together as a team. Again, I seem to go back and forth not knowing which character I'd like and prefer between Ben, Patrick, and Sarah. I will say, Sarah's without a doubt my favorite main character in the Romero Dead Zombie series. Sarah feels so real to me, down to earth, and is distraught from everything she's been through. I also like how in Sarah's first scene, when we were first introduced to her in a room all by herself, the cameras pointed the calendar, not knowing what day or year it is, and then it cuts to the scene how it was only a dream. You also feel bad for Sarah on how her boyfriend was bitten by a zombie, and his arm was cut off to prevent the disease from spreading on him. This was two years before Evil Dead 2, but I could be thinking too much about that. It's a powerful, sad relationship with her boyfriend for what they've gone through. Rose wanted to shoot Sarah's boyfriend, but Sarah said, no, I'll do it. It was another one of those moments where she didn't want to kill her boyfriend, but she had no choice because he was bitten and infected. The character Rose was such a jerk and an asshole. He's the real bad guy of this movie. He thinks because he's a soldier that he has the right to be in charge of everyone. He felt the need to be domineering, the alpha male. His performance has been pointed out being over the top, which I can see why. Joseph Plato still does a good job in this movie as Rhodes, but there are times he can be a little bit over the top. I'm running this operation, Frankenstein! I hate the way Rhodes treats Sarah when she not listens. He gives her a warning. He will kill her if she does not listen. You're on the edge of your seat feeling tense like, No, Rhodes, don't you even think about killing her, you sick son of a bitch. You feel like you want to jump in the movie and kill Rhodes. You get a little bit of anxiety sometimes watching this movie. The guy has no compassion to anyone, and the scientists who will work their butts off to exhaustion. He doesn't provide food or let the scientists rest. Rhodes is the kind of character you love to hate. Rhodes, Simon's soldiers are also a bunch of assholes, too. In the end, Rhodes gets what he deserves when his whole body gets eaten by zombies. You say to yourself, eh, not a big loss. Like, whatever, fuck you, Rhodes. Rest in peace, Joseph Palato. I'm sure in real life he was a real nice guy compared to Rhodes. The character Frankenstein Logan, tell him by the way he looks, he hasn't eaten much or slept in Lord knows how long. His goal is trying to find a cure and a solution to help find a cure for the dead zombies. But like he said to Rhodes, this could take months or years of finding a cure, which is the sad truth about diseases. To this day, certain diseases don't have a cure. 
One way to describe his character, he's like the Dr. Frankenstein of this movie. He has his zombies teaching him to be human and civilized. The zombie's name is Bub, shows sign of humanity, but he's learned to be human. He's innocent as a sympathetic zombie. Bud is very loyal to his master and does what he's told. He listens very well, surprisingly. Also, for you Stephen King fans, you will notice an Easter of him holding a copy of one of his books, Salem's Lodge. The actor who played the zombie, Bub, this is going to come as a surprise voice character he played. He was played by Sherman Howard, who did the voice of Blight and Derek Powers in the Batman Beyond cartoon series. Now that Dr. Logan wasn't a bad person, I'm just not sure if this experiment was not necessary. You can say that he went too far, did more harm than good. It's another example of how science sounds amazing, but it has its drawbacks. Dr. Logan succeeded. I've never seen anything like this in a zombie movie. It's also weird to say how Bub is kind of sympathetic despite he's a zombie who's eaten and killed a lot of people. In a way, this movie is like George Romero's version of Frankenstein, because the original Frankenstein monster is a reanimated dead zombie when you think about it. Another character I like in this movie is John, played by Terry Alexander. He's a very nice man, a gentleman, friendly, cares for Sarah, shows compassion to her. I like the scene after being exhausted from roads in the army. She hangs out with him in a spot where she needs relaxation, escapism, gets a little drunk. John telling her, why don't we just leave, start all over, that being in the bunker is a waste of time. Sarah does not know what else they can do. John says there's still more out there than she realizes, and that maybe she can still have kids, teach them important lessons. I don't know why, not for nothing. Sarah doesn't think it's the type of character who wants kids because of what the world has become and how much of a population there is outside the bunker. Also, John saying that we've been punished by the creator is a very heavy line to say. Go watch the scene. I don't want to get too much of the detail on this part. I also like when John says to Sarah, This was a great 14 mil tombstone, that they're wasting their time being underground. They feel like they were dying inside out being stuck underground. Which is true, it's toxic a death sentence being underground. It was a tombstone for them being underground. The music in this movie is great. It's not Goblin, but it's still a great soundtrack. These are the moments where things are getting tense, crazy, out of balance, that something bad could happen at this moment. Out of all the George Romero dead zombie movies, this is the most gore of them all. This is also Tom Savini's best special effects ever. Anytime I watch this movie, I ask myself, how much money did it cost for all that fake blood they used in this movie? This movie came out in 1985. That was a big year for zombie movies. This movie, Reanimator, Return of the Living Dead, a non-Romero zombie movie, more of a comedy. Also, Demons by Dario Argento came out. That was a big year for zombie movies. This will surprise you when I tell you this. When this movie was being made at the time, it had a lot of production problems, studio interference, budget cutbacks. The script was supposed to be longer, according to Tom Savini. The finished product was not well received at the time when this movie came out. Audience and critics did not like it at the time. Years later, the film was now considered to be a classic. When I first saw this movie, I loved it right away. I was very pumped up about it. I was really invested in this movie. It surprised me. Anytime I've gone back to rewatch this movie, it gets better for me every time on more viewings. It's also hard for me to decide which one do I like better, this or Dawn of the Dead. I'm back and forth between those movies. They're both great movies in their own ways and have their advantages. I'm also surprised how to this day, this movie still seems to get a bad mix, bad rep from some people, either like it or don't like this movie, and I don't understand why that is. I think this is a great movie, coming from someone who's not a big zombie fan, but this movie is an exception for me. In my opinion, this is the best ending of the series, it could have been a perfect ending to the trilogy if they had not made any more after this. We see Sarah and her friends on a deserted island, ending on a good high note of hope, faith, and a fresh restart. That anything is still possible. It's a happy ending. The old world is gone, we can't bring it back, but let's start all over again. Again, as we wrap up this video, here's a brief review on the remakes. In 2008, Day of the Dead was remade. I saw this once in 2013, coming back home from a Monster Mania trip. I don't remember anything about it. And little did I know at the time this was a remake to the original Day of the Dead. I remember not liking it at all. I rewatched it recently, my opinions have not changed, and this movie still sucks. 
Unnecessary remake. Also, this movie made me fall asleep. Mina Savara sucked as Sarah. The character's role is not a main focus and protagonist like in the original. Instead, it's about Sarah and her boring family. I'm never going to rewatch this movie ever again unless I did a video on George Romero's Dead Remakes, despite I keep mentioning the remakes in these videos. In 2018, there was a second remake to Day of the Dead. I read about this one from what I've heard and read about. It was not good at all. I didn't bother watching this for this video. Why did they bother remake this movie twice? Did they not learn their lesson from 2008? Leave it alone. Bunch of idiot producer morons. So, no comment on this one. So, moving on. The best of the best of the Romero dead zombie movies. The more score out of all of them. And really darker than its predecessors. This is a movie I've seen myself going back to rewatch on more viewings. And gets better for me. This will surprise you when I say this. Or you might agree. Out of all the Romero dead zombie movies. This is the most true Walking Dead movie. Tomorrow we dive into Land of the Dead. See you soon.